Welcome everyone, Dr. Thor here, get ready for Christ Consciousness. Well, here's my review on the next book in the uh, line of uh, Colonel Michael A. Aquino of the Temple of Set, and the next book is the Mind Star book. Boy, it's hard getting through his junk. I've never seen such worse writing than he is. It's pseudo-intellectual psychobabble. It's hard to believe uh, that anybody in a military position or considers himself a researcher would put together such garbage as this. It's just really pathetic. Now, I've read hundreds of books, and these are probably the worst books I've ever read out of hundreds, thousands of books I've ever read. And it's hard to believe that this, um, you know, everybody as far as I'm concerned is Suto. It's hard to believe this guy uh, was able to get a doctorate degree and become a military officer with the kind of crap that he writes. But, you know, a lot of this is very dumadamia writing. And it's the fact is, is that it is in a pseudo uh, condition, a very false condition of what you think this has in it. And let's go through a few things here. Uh, now, first of all, he states in here that he almost died from cancer in 2015. And, of course, he eventually died about five years later. I, I'm not sure if it was 21 or 20 that he died. Um, but he made it another five years uh, before he apparently the cancer came back. Uh, he stated that on a talk show that he was on the other side of cancer, healing from it, uh, yet I guess he lived um, uh, for another five years. But it states there he almost died from it. Had a, he didn't say he had a big operation there, but apparently that's the case. Now, one of the strange things he also did, and what is this compulsion that these Satanists have with taking care of animals? So I don't quite understand that, except that it's kind of a big cover for them. Uh, that they seem to love animals so much. Uh, this book is dedicated to um, him and Lilith, uh, apparently, have dedicated this book. And when did this... Uh, this was first written in 2016. It was redone in 2018. And this was bef when he was getting very sick and uh, basically preparing to die. He said he rushed all this stuff forward. Well, he shouldn't have rushed it. But so Mindstar is dedicated... Um, Lilith and I dedicate Mindstar to our fur, feather, and scale family to whom we owe more than um, we can express and whom we shall rejoice at the Rainbow Bridge. Now, the Rainbow Bridge is a famous bridge where everybody expects to um, unite. It's a mythology, obviously, but expects to uh, reunite with their actual uh, pets that have passed away. So, this is known within the animal community, where everybody lives in a fantasy land, thinking that there's going to be something like that. But let's hope that if people reunite with their relatives, that they also reunite with their beloved pets. What I find interesting here is that he lists a whole bunch of types of animal, not only birds, cats, and dogs, wolves, lion, turtle, a seal. A raccoon, a mouse, a tiger, another tiger, another wolf. Now, I don't know if these are a cougar. How strange is that? So, did he keep these on his property in San Francisco? So, I don't understand what that's all about. I don't know if he sponsored these animals because, you know, you can do with a lot of sanctuaries. You can sponsor these animals. Um, I don't think he had any preserves where these animals were kept or anything else. So I don't know what the full story is in here, but there must be about 30 that he's dedicated uh, to this that is there. We just don't have any idea what that's all about. Um, apparently, Lilith is very active in animal preservation. It's kind of interesting because that's where, of course, you know, the Trust Process Church, which turned into Best Friends Animal Sanctuary, were not Satanists. Uh, in any way whatsoever. They were Gnostic-type Christians, and they didn't use any uh, satanic symbols or anything else. Uh, so that is another thing pinned on them of doing that. And uh, some of the most brutal people in societies uh, who murder other people without concern uh, have some of the greatest animal anti-animal cruelty laws, kind of ironic. 
uh, or uh, it's more than that. It's just kind of strange. <laughs> uh, the Nazis were known for that. While they were torturing and having their dogs chew babies up in front of their mothers, they had these animal protective laws. Um, so we just don't know. A lot of uh, civilizations, particularly Islam, um, considers dogs to be dirty and foul and never should be allowed in the house. So, and from what I understand, they're not big animal uh, lovers in any way whatsoever. So we just don't know. And of course, the Jews or the conservative Jews are still to this day having animal sacrifices. They take them to the Wailing Wall. I don't know if it's a sheep or a goat, and they cut their throat right there. I've seen this where they had hundreds line up. So who knows about any of this stuff? And um, certainly Anton LaVey supposedly had a tiger uh, that he kept at his house uh, and so forth. So I don't know what that was all about or whether that was gossip or not, but apparently it was true and eventually it was taken away or whatever. I'm not sure there, but um, doesn't mean you, you can't keep a tiger in a house or a lion, whatever it was. Um, and of course, there are animal sanctuaries specifically for that. Tippy Hedron has one in Southern California and uh, so forth. But why these um, kind of strange groups seem to be linked to animals and the care of them is not uh, is kind of strange, but he's constantly stated that she's very active in that. They push this, they talk about it, that his wife is very active in saving animals, whatever. But I don't know of any of it. I haven't seen anything linked to them. I don't. They haven't stated where they've given their money to. None of this seems to be um, out there to any great degree. Um, maybe they don't want to pub publicize it because of his background. You don't go around looking like Eddie Munster wherever you go in a goofy little outfit. It's kind of shocking that uh, he would do this. But, you know, uh, we'll get into that in a minute. But uh, you probably don't want to be well known, just like the fact that it, apparently there's several children that Lilith had. At least we've now tracked to two. She had a brother. His mother was involved. I mean, this is a family operation, which everybody seems to be gather, uh, together. And I don't think there's anything wrong with that. It's just that these are things most people don't know and are kind of hidden depending on what's going on. He describes the family when uh, a search warrant was issued at his home and they came in and who was there or not. Um, so it's all part of that ridiculousness. But here he goes into his pseudo-intellectual things. And this is a book full of nothing. He claims this is going to explain life and death in the soul, and what he talks about is a bunch of nonsense, and he keeps referencing other things to be very confusing. The objective universe, the subjective universe. Well, these are all these little mind game turn, uh, terms that pseudo-intellectuals uh, talk about. And instead of defining things clearly and specifically using terms everybody can understand, he's got some words in this book that I've never seen in print before and are rarely if ever used. I've never heard them before. Uh, it's really a bunch of psychobabble, so he can come off as being pseudo-intellectual what he is. What, what does this mean? The whole idea is you take complicated concepts and you make them easy to understand by using words that everybody knows what the meaning is, not what you want to talk to to an elitist group. Um, so, you know, but of course, that's what the, he was trying to do here, trying to get at the more educated uh, psychotic types. So this is all part of the process that's going on. He tries to talk about consciousness and other things, and it's really just diff uh, d diffused nonsense. There's no clear thoughts here. He's referencing a bunch of nonsense that nobody cares about. And it's interesting of how much he wants to go into Egyptian um, his history and functions when he really doesn't, I can tell he knows hardly anything about it. And after all, he was involved in Satanism, which is a Judeo-Christian belief system, uh, for most of his involvement. He just switched over to this because he felt like it and then claims that he got some message from Set. And of course, nothing is known about that God. And I don't think there was any organizations that were dedicated to Set before him. The Set is a strange and like like most mythologies, we really don't understand, but it has been labeled as the, quote, Satan of actual um, belief systems. Because it's another Middle Eastern belief system, that's where Egypt is, uh, this is kind of combined with, and most things seem to come from Egypt. So the belief systems that are Christian, Jewish, etc., seem to have originated, and uh, set may be another word for Satan. And of course, there was a Jewish uh, leader called Seth, 
and uh, so forth. So these are things, and it's a common Jewish name. So there's all these things that kind of mince together into quite a stinky little pie. And he goes into the soul, the Judeo-Christian soul, the Jewish Christian afterlife. Who cares? We don't care what their belief systems are. You're supposed to state what your belief systems are. None of this is really defined well. He tries to use all sorts of old Greek terms, Egyptian terms, and it really just adds up into this foul-tasting stew of combinations. He really isn't coming to any higher conclusions. And he talks about that who cares about the um, uh, Egyptian gods and stuff, which he blends in all the stories. Over it. But he's not really explaining anything and what they're doing. There's not a single practical thing in this book whatsoever. He doesn't talk about it. It's all historical stuff. And this is something I found from the Temple of Seton generally. All their books are very kindergarten level. They're poorly written. There's no good information in them. There's nothing practical whatsoever. And they're base of all base, which is the kind of things you get from uh, their other, particularly uh, Edred Flowers with his runic stuff. It was all pretty low level stuff, very poorly produced um, when he originally did it, when he uh, produced it himself off of copy machines. Uh, and this was a guy who's supposed to be a teacher. He put together nothing of quality and it's all very based just like his book on snm uh sex magic there's nothing in there it's a kindergarten book you could sell that at walmart uh and this is the same thing and there's nothing in this book either there's nothing here he's putting together stuff trying to reaffirm his own belief systems and there's nothing here and it's not explained well it's not put together well it's just garbage he likes to use words like the telos and logos you know these are all these kind of terms that um are not really in his tradition. Well, why isn't he using uh, terms that are in his tradition and that can be understood? He, he even goes into the fact of, he names uh, and details, seven philosophical traditions. What? Who cares? He goes into Reformation, Stoism, Cynicalism, Scholasticism, uh, Skepticism, Sufism, who cares? He's going into giving you definitions of these uh, uh, philosophical traditions. Who cares? I mean, it doesn't really mean, uh, what does that have to do with everything else? And none of it really is tied together. I mean, this is just crap. He goes into so many other things that really have no uh, value whatsoever. Uh, he's trying to explain death and talks about death and what it is. Well, who cares? There's no insights here anyway. He talks about what the, who cares what the Christians, Jews, and other things. You're supposed to be explaining your position. And he really doesn't go into any of that worth a damn. So um, he talks about the different techniques and so forth that are in mind. What techniques? It's just garbage. There's nothing there. It's laid out poorly, scattered around, poor terminology. There's nothing here that you can look at and go back to. Um, you know, who owns your body, the state, religion, psychiatry, family, family. What is all this stuff? He talks about materialism, um, all of this, uh, and he talks about a whole bunch of stuff that has nothing to do with a particular system of uh, which would be the Egyptian set, how you do things, what the, it's just a bunch of gobbledygook from, taken from all sorts of things. He constantly references other people's works uh, that you're supposed to know or not. Who cares? The last half of his book is one of the biggest craps you'll ever see. And of course, um, all of the stuff he writes here, left hand path, right hand, it's just nebulous nonsense. And when he describes these things, he does at the end of his book here, he has a, uh, basically, he uh, evoked two spirits, Sphinx and Shemiraz. Shemiraz. And he talks with them about Plato's diary, dialogues. What? So he's calling on advanced beings to talk about a human-created particular. Uh, it's just boring as hell. There's nothing there. Uh, you really have to, you know, every time I get, try and give this guy and other people credit, um, this is an imbecile's book. This is someone of the lowest mentality that you can possibly think of, writing nothing but garbage of little of no value. There's nothing practical here. It's pseudo-intellectual, mental masturbation. Uh, there's nothing here of a calling spirits to go over Plato. And what does Plato have to do with anything? 
I mean, this is an old philosopher that, uh, you know, I've rarely seen Plato referenced in any type of metaphysical or magical publications. There's so many books, and he ignores all these books. He ignores all the uh, different texts. But there isn't a lot of Egyptian texts. There are a few, but very little. And he certainly has an attitude. He talks about everything but... And, of course, it's the constant nonsense, and his bibliography is pathetic if you want to go back to that. The books he lists are just garbage. He's not listing any kind of books of significant value. He's not listing any kind of rare books, nothing. Of course, he wouldn't spend his money on real books, something he could get for free out of some library. So the whole idea is that... um, This just has absolutely nothing to do with anything. If this is supposed to be uh, what he knows, well, he better change and uh, his new books better be something that has some meat in it, has some practicality, has some techniques. He thinks there's techniques like mind war and this is going to stop war. This is childish, imbecilic stuff. He also seems very caught up in movies and The Hobbit, um, all of the things that are come on here. Not only that, the writer of The Hobbit uh, was a radical Catholic on top of everything else. And uh, whatever interesting is in there certainly is not something that you would put much effort on. But he's referencing movies and other things. He seems to be a big movie and TV guy, you know, just like his dark shadow haircut look. Uh, and all the other things that he copied, and he seems to like to play that. And apparently he's been able to get away with that in the U.S. military. I don't know if he wore that silly haircut and everything else, uh, which I would assume is against regulations, but maybe not. It was short enough. Uh, At NORAD, where he spent four years at NORAD, um, uh, looking at UFOs and uh, having very high clearances and all the other things he does. So this guy is a real strange person. Uh, unusual person of not much value. He doesn't really have anything to say here of much meaning and tries to equate his belief systems with the classics to give his crap thinking some sort of uh, additional benefit because Plato said Nietzsche agrees with the Who cares with these people? These are things that you uh, take information from and then you uh, come to a greater conclusion. Not from the fact of stating, yeah, this person stated that so we understand it. So it's a soup, a foul-tasting soup and stew, all thrown together uh, with confusing terminologies written by someone who is obviously not on this planet or is delusional in their thinking. Because this is just junk. There's nothing here. There's zero. There isn't a single practical technique in either of these two books, Mind Wars and this one. There's nothing in there. So he has one more in his trilogy, and these are supposed to be his greatest uh, discoveries. Well, he's discovered nothing. He claims to read all these books on uh, ritual magic and other things. Well, I didn't, there's certainly nothing here, and there certainly isn't any techniques. He's trying to build this pseudo intellectual understanding of the cosmos, which really doesn't hold up, and even if it does who cares? There's certainly, he hasn't done much uh, Egyptian type research and their organization really isn't based in it. It's kind of insulting for him to think that he knows that when he's basically a Nazi within his entire group has been geared towards that mysticism. But the bottom line is, is that he didn't want to come out with that for one reason or another. Why he didn't do like it, like his buddy Edred Flowers did with the runic stuff, why he didn't come out and demonize um, Odin and Thor and so forth, is kind of mystical. Uh, why didn't you do that? Well, he doesn't want to get caught in that uh, small amount of research that can be done in that area because there isn't much. So he wants to go back to these ancient societies that are so-called sophisticated and better than anybody else uh, and achieved great things. Well, you got to remember the Norse basically did not achieve much. They were raiders and they brought their culture for better or worse to the rest of the world. And they certainly didn't build giant structures anywhere uh, or do that kind of stuff. So that wasn't good enough for him. Uh, Only his hero could follow them, um, which they really didn't. They were following basically what we would consider uh, the evil dark, like the black sun. They were were always getting the darker evil sides of things uh, that they were into. And we really just don't know. They didn't use Egyptian symbols because the people in the time in that area of Germany wouldn't have accepted. They wouldn't even know what it meant. 
Egyptology was just barely coming into fruition in the 20s, and nobody even knew of it, and they didn't, haven't even figured out hieroglyphics. I forget when they found the Rosetta Stone, where finally everybody figured out, but uh, that was, so it's just a bunch of stupidity, and there's nothing at all to be benefited from this book. It's, uh, it's certainly something that nobody should waste their time reading. So we'll go on to his next book and his final book uh, in his, um, um, this is Mind Star, what is his, his next book? Uh, let's see if we can find a, a list of it. But certainly this is not a person who has any kind of... Uh, the next one is Fine Star. And we'll have to see how that is of his Mind Trilogy. If this is Mind Trilogy with no techniques, no anything. And of course he states in this book yet again his love for and belief in the electromagnetic. Is said electromagnetic? Is that what makes it happen? He does seem to believe in spirits, and I don't know how he's classifying them. Because if they're not electromagnetic, then he doesn't believe in them. So he's still stuck in that and believes that everything is connected to that, but confusingly doesn't state that said or anything else he's talking about here is electromagnetic in nature. Uh, but he certainly still squashes all psychic power because he can't produce any of that. None whatsoever. Uh, he made up a spooky little audio tape to blast through speakers onto um, uh, battlefields that he claimed he got some results from. Don't believe it. More of his fantasy. Um, I did read his books on the Church of Satan, and they're written in the same crappy way, constantly referring to Oh, it's very hard to get through when you're constantly referring to other works that you're supposed to know, and who cares? Um, so he's got two volumes on them where he covers everything from his time there because, you know, he saved every gum wrapper he got from the Church of Satan to put in his book. Very typical of this kind of person um, and uh, the kind of stuff that they like, uh, particularly the military who document everything because they're so stooges. The armies have always been known as dumb people, and that's why they pulled someone like him along. Um, because of his sutta, and it's sutta, it really is false intellectualism, because this guy isn't intellectual at all, he doesn't seem to understand anything, he keeps getting into the, um, the ridiculous dogma of the um, magnetic reality of life, which is something, so is everything magnetic, and so forth, well, um, that's what he thinks, and if it's not, it isn't real, I've heard that before, somebody wrote a book on that, um, some scientist, and, um, of course, you have to. and of course, everything is conveniently twisted by by him, like he twisted it in the uh, satanic uh, abuse uh, at the Presidio. That was again uh, twisted, and of course, it's an interesting story. But how much of it did he change as well, at least slightly? Uh, the bottom line is, with all these cases, like everything else, there's never any convictions, and generally charges are dropped. They don't even go to a trial. So, what are we supposed to make of that? You know, there's an awful lot of uh, bad information on both sides. But we'll see what happens with his next one. Fine Far. He's got the Neutron Bomb. Not sure what that's about. Two volumes on the Temple of Set, which is going to be one of the most boringest reads you could get. There is no information on Set of any great degree. It's all hearsay, little bits and pieces. And uh, certainly he can't put it together. He, he contrived, and he's mentioned this, he's contrived the entire set system uh, himself. He made it up. Everything is based kind of on Golden Dawn stuff who put together their own system as well. They didn't have, a, uh, they didn't have their own system either. They, they put together a system. So uh, people are always looking for the system. There is no system. And these things uh, that go back in ancient time, people have no idea what anybody was doing. And we have no idea what the Druids did. We have no idea what the Egyptians did. There's a lot of fragments of stuff, and we just don't know how valid any of it is. It has a lot to do with the interpretation of the translator, and are they getting any of it right? Well, if it has to... He's also got some fiction books, um, Fire Force, Star Wars Parody, uh, including The Secret of the Lost Ark, um, Song of the Illuminate Darkness by One Ring, which is, again, something he wrote uh, claiming when he had a specially made Lord of the Rings. It's a fantasy. Hey, Aquino, Lord of the Rings was not real. The characters in those books are not real. But he claimed he channeled these energies, and, uh, and he likes to put everybody else down. 
Um, he's got memoirs of Captain Nemo. Again, he's just supposed to be putting into these things all sorts of uh, metaphysical. We break the sword. The, the Nazi peace of 1940, and I have no idea. That's, again, a fiction. I don't know what that's supposed to be about. Of course, his ridiculous Ghost Rides, which is his autobiography, which is just garbage. And apparently he's published poems from his mother, poems from 1919 to 1928, so 10 years, 100 years ago. <laughs> so from his mother, Betty Ford, and... Um, I'm going to read those as well to see what kind of a warped philosophy his mother had, if she did, uh, to breed this kind of goofy guy. But this certainly doesn't help his position. It doesn't make things look better. There's no, these books are so poorly written, so poorly constructed with uh, what is a infantile view of metaphysics and everything that goes with it that, uh, again, it's very hard to give anybody any kind of decent credit um, to anything. I keep trying to give him credit uh, because there's little evidence um, of anything that he's done improper, and he went through an entire military career without being disciplined from what we know of his record. So he wasn't disciplined. He didn't do anything wrong in the military uh, uh, and so forth. So, but when it comes to a public, he's only had one particularly law case against him, which was the Presidio case. That Presidio case uh, charge was dropped against him, as it was with the other person who was accused of 60 molestations. He was uh, accused of one. It's a big scattered, strange stories of priests and other things that don't add up well. Uh, but he's a comic book character in his Eddie Munster Black Shadows suit that he wears with that goofy haircut. I mean, it's hard to believe that you could operate as a military officer looking like that. And the fact that he was allowed to do that. And you have to wonder why. So you may not be able to go over someone's religion, but even that, everybody uh, is victimizes you when they don't like you. They pass you up for promotions, etc., because you're weird. Well, apparently, that was not the case with him. Uh, the other thing is, is that and it's obvious that this guy looks weird. Every picture of him has got that same Eddie Munster haircut, which is short enough, I guess, to get by the military review. But the bottom line is it still is an obvious, strange haircut that the military allowed him to do. Now, let's remember that he is an officer, so how much uh, they uh, can uh, force him to do something or not is unknown. He also didn't go through the normal military system. He didn't go to military school. He didn't go to West Point, uh, which is, has some pretty nasty uh, ways of training you in there. A very military school atmosphere. Uh, so while everybody else was uh, being harassed and heads dunked in toilets and all the other things they do at West Point, he was surfing the wave, dude, off the point. You know, living in... Uh living off the point of Isla Vista. So I guess he lived in Santa Barbara, so he didn't live in the dorms there. So the whole idea is that uh, this is the, uh, the reality of what's going on with him. So he's kind of a very strange person. He was able to get through a lot of military nonsense because he went the alternative route. The alternative route is he got his commission by going to a four-year college, which I didn't even know you could do. But apparently he was able to do that. Once he got his degree, he was able to then get a commission uh, and this is how he got it. He didn't have to go through all that military uh, school nonsense. So uh, he claims to, as an officer, to go through Special Forces or Green Beret School. I don't know how tough that is or not. Green Berets uh, is a very tough school to go through. And now, did he go through the regular training or was given officers training, meaning they were much easier? Because generally, it's very hard to get into any of the special forces, whether they're rangers or SEALs or other things. These are very difficult schools. They're trying to get the best of the best. Um, certainly, um, I'm not sure if we could classify him that in any way whatsoever. But uh, I'm assuming he had to go through a fair amount of stress. He claims that he has seen a lot of action where he was in firefights. Uh, again, he doesn't talk about this that much. He doesn't talk about being with other people. He doesn't talk about anything. He acts like he was in these places all by himself. 
I don't know. I don't know any of that. We don't know what's going on. People claim that he was in the Phoenix program, which murdered about 100,000 civilians. Well, he didn't start that program. If he participated as a special forces officer, well, that was probably the orders then, and that was something that the military does all the time. So he didn't start it. It wasn't his idea uh, to do that either. Whether, he, whether you participate or not, I'm not even sure you've got a choice. But uh, all of these things, we just don't know. I believe the Phoenix Project probably was later than 1970, which is when he apparently left Vietnam. He was there for a year, some say two. Uh, we just don't know. He claims a year. So um, we, don't, we just don't know with any of that stuff and what's going on. But here again, there's nothing to judge anything by. There's nothing practical. There's nothing. He, he's good. This is all philosophical mumbo jumbo. Uh, as I've mentioned, it's really just a foul stew of stinking, uh, stupid explanations, badly written nonsense. So nobody should get this book. Nobody should read it. There's nothing to learn from it. You're not going to learn a single thing from this. And what the Egyptian um, concept of the soul and everything else, it just doesn't say anything. It's just vacuous. You can get much better interesting writings. Getting through any of his writings is tenuous nonsense with him using big words to sound important and referencing 50 different things that have no value to you. You have to explain things properly. None of this is done. Hopefully it's been a help. Until next time.